So we have a novel strategy for the treatment of non-muscle invasive bladder cancer. So it's a unique study in the sense that it targets patients in a neoadjuvant context. So we're giving uh, a live oncolytic virus to patients um, infused into the bladder prior to bladder resection, uh, which would be routine standard of care. So it provides us with a very unique window of opportunity to look at the effect of virus on the tumour. Patients effectively receive either a single or a double dose of virus infusion at the beginning of the week and then the following week, seven days later or so, the surgeon will remove the tumour as standard of care. So it gives us a very unique uh, look at the biology of the tumour, looking particularly for immunological changes in the tumour microenvironment as well as evidence that the virus is replicating by us looking at serial urine samples. The Canon study consists of 15 patients who were treated with intravesical uh, virus. We used a very small dose of mitomycin, which is a non cytotoxic dose to try and increase the level of ICAM-1, which is a receptor the virus uses to get into the cancer cells. We completed the study. There were no serious adverse events. It was extremely well tolerated. And in every single patient, we found that the virus had replicated in the tumour. And we have looked at the histology and the tissue of the, uh, of the patient um, tumour that have been removed and this shows quite an intense immune inf infiltrate uh, and also upregulation of the PDL1 uh, protein which uh, is obviously a, a target for checkpoint inhibitors paving the way for possible combinations. Yes, yeah, so, so this is a, a study using a, the same agent. So this is an oncolytic virus called Coxsackie A21. But rather than infuse it in the bladder as an intravesical treatment in the first study, this is an intravenous treatment. So we have completed part A of this study. Part A consists of intravenous doses of Coxsackie, live Coxsackie virus to patients with refractory cancers. The cancers involved in the first part were bladder cancer, prostate cancer, melanoma, and non-small cell lung. And now we have completed the first part safely. We've shown that virus, once it's infused into the bloodstream, does re reach the tumour because we know this from tumour biopsy results. The second part of the study is what we are highlighting now, which is a combination uh, of the virus with intravenous pembrolizumab. And here we'll focus simply on non-small cell lung cancer and bladder cancer patients. So we have a target of 76 uh, further patients to recruit to this study. So Coxsackie A21 is a wild type virus, it's not genetically modified, and is a member of a, a group of viruses which have been used for uh, clinical use, and these are safe agents and have a very long track record of safety. They have actually very little in the way of adverse events are reported. So although on, on face value it might sound alarming to have a live virus introduced to a, a human being for a deliberate uh, reason, uh, for, a, for a therapeutic reason, we know that these viruses are uh, not harmful in, in man and this has been extensively tested. What we do know is that they are very very good at activating the immune system in the tumour microenvironment. They have that actually unique property and some people have um, used the analogy of lighting the fire. We know that the immune microenvironment is very silent immunologically, it's very subdued and the viruses are a good way of infecting the tumour and as it were lighting the fire and re-energising the the immune response and we think this will be enhanced by the combination with checkpoint inhibition particularly that Coxsackie virus increases PDL1 which is the target for anti-PD1 antibodies. Well I think the, the um, challenge really is not to regard all oncolytic viruses able to do everything just like we wouldn't any other pharmaceutical drug what we have to really is to tailor make a particular virus with its properties to a specific type of cancer. So the TVEC uh, herpes virus is, is clearly uh, highly evolved now into uh, an a licensed product and used routinely for the treatment of melanoma. The Coxsackie also has very similar properties in melanoma but actually may be a better agent for other cancers and we know these cancers are expressing ICAM-1 and that is the way the virus is taken up. So we start to think about viruses in terms of the type of tumour and the way the receptors they use and which tumours actually express those receptors. So it, it may be that tailor making and genetically modifying the viruses for a particular tumour environment, a particular oncogenic or signalling background may actually make a lot of logical sense. So I, I personally see a number of viruses coming into clinical practice following on from TVEC but it won't be an, a, a sort of a, a general sort of broad strategy. Hopefully they'll be very focused and scientifically driven to 
uh, address specific sort of advantages such as targeting and the Coxsackie virus is a great, great example of that because ICAM-1 is a very, very uh, uh, sort of durable biomarker of response to Coxsackie AE21. I think there are more viruses coming and I think the uh, opportunity now with a huge interest in immunotherapy and checkpoint inhibition um, puts us in a, in a really good position to drive this forward very quickly. Thank you so much for your time. Okay, pleasure. <laughs>